we have a very special teacher in Hekima Center, and uh, she will be speaking. Last time we had a, a presentation, those who remember. Who did the presentation? Do you remember the guy who was presenting? In every session, we are planning to be doing some sort of showcase. So we are, we are a team here, and before the main speaker comes, one of the young guys come and say, hey, this is what I do. They take us through their day to day as far as their business is concerned. And today we have a presentation from one of our teachers, and this is Ryan. Karibu sana. Come and speak to us. Hey, buona, 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 buona. You know, if you can't appreciate her well, eh, you will come to present on her behalf. Can we invite you to present on her behalf? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you this morning? Okay. So my name is Rael. I'm a teacher. It's a title I have taken, I have embraced. Um, well, that is not where my plan you know the way we plan and when you asked what do you want to become it's very clear for you that you want to become this um, i'm trained in marketing i have a degree in marketing but then how did i find myself being a teacher so the journey starts some ooh, how many years so many years back uh, when i was in high school i used to be good in maths and sciences so at our school, we used to have something called peer tutoring. Over the weekend, this, the teachers would organize. Those students who understood or were good in mathematics were paired with students who were struggling in the subject, and then they would teach them here and there. So I happened to be an active member of, of that uh, arrangement. Over the weekend, I would be given maybe two, three students to help them in a topic, and it was working well. Then when I did my KCSE, I got an A plane in maths. And then, uh, thank you. <laughs> so then what happened, my friend, you know the way you have friends in church? So my friend said, hey, you got an A and my daughter is struggling in maths. Why don't you come and help? So I, I decided to go. And because I had some experience in, in teaching my friends at school, uh, I knew maybe this could, one or two things that could have been the issue. So I helped the girl over the holiday. When she went back to school, she improved um, in, in her performance. Her marks improved. And the mother was so happy. And what the mother did, the mother went telling other people, oh, I found someone who taught my daughter and my daughter did this. So it became a referral. So I got two, three more kids uh, that I taught, and the results were the same, that these students improved. Um, and that's how I, I found myself teaching mathematics. So, but currently I am purely an online maths tutor. And how did I find myself there? Um, it started, well, I, I started, I grew through referral, and I had several, I would say many students uh, to teach. But then the, this friend of mine, um, we were just talking, and, told, and I told him, hey, I have, um, I, this is what I do. Apart from the things we are doing here, this is something else I also do. So one day, he sent me a screenshot. He says, uh, call this person. They are looking for a maths tutor. It's online. Uh, you take it and, and do it. Then I was like, oh my god, I'm, we've never done this thing online. It was during, was it? Yeah, just before, before COVID hit. So this was a student uh, in Bermuda. Uh, Bermuda is an island uh, associated with UK, Britain, and all that. So they, they needed a tutor. A student was relocating from Bermuda to Kenya. So the parent wanted um, the student to be prepared. She was coming to year seven, and she was in year six. So they wanted to make sure that by the time she comes to year seven, British curriculum, she was up to the class, up to the game. So I asked my friend, what do we do? She was like, come and buy and buy her. We, we put our feet, we put our feet. Either we drown all, or we, we survive. So we were like, um, the person, the contact person, we organized about the, how to look at uh, whatever we were using, and it was a check. So I got the student. Um, one week into the lesson, the parent was excited. I don't know. Uh, the parent was happy. Then I got a referral in Bermuda. So now 
and it has grown. Right now, I have five students uh, whom I'm teaching maths in Bermuda, and uh, one of them is a homeschooling student. So it's like we have very frequent classes. Um, how did I, uh, when I look at how I have come to find myself there, I noted I've always been around teenagers and students and all that. I've always enjoyed things around empowerment. And sometimes uh, that is how we find our paths to our specific areas. And at this point, I have to really sell Kingdom Boardroom, Christine, because one of the challenges with people like us who are, I must say I'm a bright student, people who are good in class is that we are multi-talented. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, but you can't be everywhere. But one of the things that Kingdom Boardroom Youth, the forum that has organized where you're seated today, help is clarify my path. Out of all these 50 things or 10 things that I could do, which is that specific thing that is my call? And I remember Christine is one of the people who, called, who helped clarify that I'm actually a teacher. Um, so, so now I tell you, I have a cousin. She, she likes food. Anytime you talk about food, she's very excited. So when she cleared Form 4, her parents took her to KCA to do something to do with forensic. But then she quit along the path. She, we met and she was like, oh, Rael, you know I quit. I was like, ilikuwa ngumu. I'm like, because I've been that place, I know. Uh, and that is one of the things maybe we should do, Christine. Can we know ourselves so early that we don't waste our years, mark timing all over places and find ourselves when it's too, when it's too late? So what happened is, out of that kupenda chakula, now she is, what when you wanna bake, wanna They are, what when you wanna bake, vitu wanna itwa? Awa itu imishi. So she has, she has been doing nice birthday, anniversary, wedding cakes, up to, mbaka ile point kila mtu kwa nyumba ako surprised and you know I was like you've been around this area it's just that no one knew no one knew so so i have also been in that area of teenagers teaching and all that uh, appreciating when i help students i see people becoming better so i don't know which area you've been rotating around you could find yourself yourself there what opportunities are there um my interest really is, when I look at how the world has grown, science has really been one of the key things that has really changed our world. And that means for us to get to that space, we must really love and appreciate science. But when I look at our culture, our Kenyan education system culture, tukisikia mao, tunadropingi form, you meet students and they tell you, I mean, Maunili drop form two. <laughs> Most of us, who can hear Maunili drop form two. And you realize that even the courses that we pursue after that, they are not science. Few of us go through the science, the science way. Most of us go the art, the art way and the social sciences way. Whereas the future is in the science, in the, in the STEM the chemistries, the biologies, and we have to get to that place where we are appreciating that. So that it has been my concern that can we, can we get to a place where we are appreciating science, we are loving mathematics, we are, we are appreciating being in that place because that's where innovation is. We must be able to appreciate some physics for us to innovate, to innovate something, for us to create something. And um, so what we are working on, we are working on a, on a project we call it Maths Pro, an online academy purely for maths, because we are hoping to empower as many, as many students as possible. And one of the challenges we have in mathematics learning is what we, what we call uh, student to teacher ratio, where you find, okay, from my experience is that every student can pass in maths. But our system with the way it is, sometimes the teacher has to rush to cover the syllabus and may leave out people, kuna watu ukiwambia log of log 10, you have to explain to them what is log. So ukikuja tu wambia log 10 na upite, they will not understand. So each one of us has their own 
way of learning. And if we can have a personalized where you are yourself learning um, and you're not in a group, um, we are believing we could help many of us appreciate and learn much through other, of course, combined with other, other activities. So what we are doing, we are creating an online academy where you can learn, you can practice, and you can test yourself, and you can engage in other STEM, STEM areas. So why I'm here is because I have seen the power of gaming in learning. Um, though this is not my, my part, there's a student I was engaging in, and... Um, she was doing microbiology, but online. I know people have said online learning can only be these business courses, uh, these ones that do not require technical hands-on. Huh? But I have seen a student who is doing microbiology using, um, I can't remember the name of the system, but it's um, an example. Okay, me is today, Chopi Bio, so I'll say some things. They were trying to identify a species a bacteria, and they were using some lab experiment that was doing some staining. So the student is given the notes and they learn, but then they have to go through the lab steps one by one by one by one. And it's, I appreciated it more than I, I, I did it in biology in school because I, I decided to go through one of the lessons they were doing. You get to learn the theory, but you also have to go through the practical of, of staining, of doing all that, and you answer the questions. And you don't need, with game, that is a game. It was actually a game that has been used to teach students um, how to do those uh, chemistry or biology practicals. I have encountered students who are doing, um, I have a student who, is, who has been in homeschooling for maths. And one of these things they've been doing, they've been using games to learn. So are you being taught about fraction? There's a gaming or a game that is helping students understand fractions and become better in fractions. So there's, there's so much we can do, especially gaming, people who, especially education and games. So for me, I have so much respect when you talk about gaming. Um, but then do we have people to do gaming? <laughs> do we have people to create these games for us? Do we have people who can build these games for us? If I'm a person who needs a game, can you be the person supplying the game? We need both. We need the users, and the users are there. But we have a shortage in uh, people who are doing the gaming stuff. And if they're there, some of them are here when the skills needed are, are here. Uh, I was sharing with Pasi another time, we were, we were building something and we needed a database, something to do with the database. I tell you, we looked, we looked for, you know, you know that we looked for, Tulita Futa. And this is my encouragement. For us who are going into this um, space, there is a lot that we can do with it. There is, there is, there is a lot. I am thinking of, I am thinking of Maths Pro Kenya, we call ourselves Maths Pro. And I know Maths Pro can go to be Maths Pro Africa because everywhere in the world we learn mathematics. And mathematics is the same. I have explored Kenyan system, British system. Right now I'm working with someone on, on I, is it Ireland or Ireland? What do you call it? Is it Ire or I? Yes, I'm working on a system uh, for that country. I've had students on Singapore system. And one plus one is one, two. When you add a fraction, fraction is the same. Whether you take it from here and take it to anywhere, it's the same. And I believe we can, we can grow. So I don't know what is your space. What is that one thing uh, that you can do and be really good at it? My minutes are over. Thank, Thank you. you. We can give her a better hand, Buona. Meskia walimu wanafunza mathematics online. Yeah, we appreciate you. Asante sana, Ryan. Uh, last, last time we had Okapi. Okapi, the fashion guy, Jabez, presenting on his fashion house. Today it's been Ryan. Who wants to be the next one? Okay, we'll, we'll get you. We'll find you. I know some guys have walked in. We'll, we'll pinpoint you later for introduction. We know you. We can see you. You cannot hide, okay? <laughs> sawa, sawa. Uh, are you being blessed? Uh, we now want to have a session with our mother. 
<laughs> Christine, yeah, please, Karibu. <laughs> Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good to see you all. I was, as, I was wondering, who is this, the mother? You know, I'm like, <laughs> mother ni nani, yeah? <laughs> anyway, it's a, it's a great morning. My heart is so full of um, warmth to see each and every one of you here today. So, karibuni sana for those who are visiting us and uh, attending this session for the first time. Uh, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Last time we had a great time on this subject of gaming. My name is Christine Orono. I, I am the lead at uh, Kingdom Boardroom. And we work closely with uh, Gideon here and Pastor Arnold there uh, to try and develop programs that are relevant to the young people. Uh, we are very passionate about young people. We are very passionate about the future and the, the world of digital technology, business, and so on. Uh, I am passionate about young people and the future that they hold. Uh, and that's why um, this, this is a session I cannot miss. Um, but my career is, uh, I've been a human resource specialist uh, for over 30 years. And out of that, I have learned a lot of things about the world of work and the world of careers. And that is why I, I am passionate about these sessions and seeing young people find their path early, like Ryle was sharing. We've had many sessions here around career development and how people can begin to chart their path, navigate their path at an early age. This is a generation that has no excuse, by the way. <laughs> Not like us who had to hit and miss sometimes. Uh, for you guys, all the information is available. Resources are available these days all over the place. And um, it's, you guys must get it right first, isn't it? Yeah, you have all the resource available. Um, so I, I ventured into the uh, um, field of career coaching. So I'm actually a certified career coach as well. And above that, I think God gave me a gift to uh, see strengths, identify strengths, and intuitively help people find their way. That for me is a God-given gift. I can sit with somebody for a few minutes and I can actually begin to unlock and unpack their path. And it's a gift. It's not... I can't tell you it's because of the training, but because intuitively, God is the one who's placed your gift in you. God is the one who knows the path for you. The Bible talks about before you, you were conceived, he knew you. He knew the length of your days. He knew what you should become, isn't it? So for most of us, because we are Christians, we believe and trust God to find the right path. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So God can order your path so that you find your way into what you are supposed to do. So I'm really pleased to even hear testimonies like Ryle of, I studied marketing, but God had something else for me. My path was in maths. And you know, through the many cues that God gives you, you know, God gives you cues from when you're really young. Yeah? When I have a daughter who is nine years old, but I can already see her gifts. I can already see them. So it's better for us to nurture her in that path. Your parents sometimes can tell the, the gift that you have, you know. So I think for us um, in this forum, we try to give you the tools and resources to be able to find your path quickly and, of course, build the skills that will help you be, grow excellence in that thing that God has given you, isn't it? That's what this forum is about. So we'll, we'll, we've taken your contacts and we'll keep you updated of forums that we'll have. Hopefully in these long, long holidays, we will try and see what other forum we can do around the career development. I get asked a lot, can we have sessions on career development, uh, support you with the tools to begin to identify my gift early. Intuitively, you already know your gift. Do you know that? It's just that sometimes it's been buried and covered by the words people have told you. But what your parents have, you know, your parents sometimes want to live their dreams through you, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> the, 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 the thing I miss to do, I now want to impose it on my child, you know? And unfortunately, there's so much that happens to us, even when we're in school, our peer, the peer pressure tries to get us into a different path from what we're supposed to do. I mean, I remember one, um, you know, I was speaking to some from four students somewhere, and, uh, you know, I asked them, so how do you go about selecting? 
your career choice. They said they sat around a table and said, ah, see, ni mzuri. Eh? This sounds good. Eh? You've not even done the research about what it is about. Yeah? So anyway, today we're here to discuss gaming. But, uh, uh, you know, at a wider context, I want to just paint a picture for you that in the world going forward, technology is taking center stage in most careers. Yeah? And we need to be prepared for that. And there's no better generation to immerse themselves in this thing than you guys. Some of us are in between. Eh? We're in between the old and the new, you know? Uh, we are sometimes like old wineskins and trying to pour new wine into it. Yeah? Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of happening in the world of technologies. And for this generation, you guys really need to immerse yourself into it. Um, there, there's <clears throat> just sharing quickly, you know, the world of tech. Um, there are eight technologies that are uh, expected to have a significant impact and change the world significantly. It's already happening. It's not even in future. We're not talking about the future. It's now. Yeah? So even when I speak to people about careers, I will not fail to highlight the, the, the role technology is going to take in, in disrupting careers. And it's already happening. If you look at every career today, there's an intersection between you, the career field you know and technology. It's obvious. Yeah? Both two have to intersect. So even the older people like me, <laughs> who have been in the world of work for long, if they don't embrace technology and the digital literacy, it's going to be a challenge for them going forward. Yeah? So it's not just for young people. Yeah? It's for all of us. How do you begin to gain the digital and, and, and technology literacy skills to keep you relevant in the world? For you guys, it's non-negotiable. Watch nianzie hapo. It's like learning maths, English. You know, there are basic subjects. English and maths were very important in the foundation of education in, this, in, in most education systems. So I want to add that today, there are elements of technology that have become like maths and English. You have to know them. You get what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's like going to be like English. It's a language you must learn. Yeah? It will get to a point where uh, people like Ivana there, you must have coding. You get what I mean? I'm a HR person, but combine it with coding. Yeah? Like I'm saying, every field of, uh, of, 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 world, of the world has had to intersect with technology in one way or another. I've been a HR specialist for over 30 years, but I can tell you in today, today's world, yeah, we are having a specialist to, to embrace technology in what we are doing yeah? as HR people. Yeah? Data has become a big story, even in the world of HR. Today we talk about people analytics and people intelligence. Yeah? I work for a major organization, and that is a given. <laughs> so, utaenda ujitafutie mahali ya kusoma, and you get the skill, because it is now a part of this career. Yeah? I have to analyze and understand data in HR. You get? And it's going to be the same thing in every other field. Yeah? Whether you're talking about legal, like uh, Omaida there, it's, it's, it's going to happen. You know? So, anyway, so very quickly, eight technologies that will have a significant impact. And I want you to take notes because I want you to go and do your own research and learn these technologies. Because these technologies will be like maths and English in your generation. It's not, it's like you, you, you will look like a dinosaur when somebody talks about some of these things and you're like, Hio ninini. It's like, are you, which world are you living in? Yeah? So, the first one, and very topical lately, artificial intelligence. My friends, if you don't know what artificial intelligence is today, you will be very, very irrelevant. Because AI is revolutionizing every industry. And for, 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 for careers like mine, which are advisory types, AI can literally do some of that work. Basic advisory work is going into AI. That's the reality. Even the legal world, true? So... One of the things that uh, you will see is that machines will perform some certain tasks that typically used to be done by humans. That's what AI is about. Artificial intelligence, machine learning. Yeah? Yeah? You know the thing with your generation, the information is all there online. Ata amna excuse, sindio? And you don't have to go to school to learn these things. You can self-educate. So go and expand your knowledge on AI. Because the future professionals are people who will be able to combine their own intelligence with machine intelligence. Yeah? 
It will be about people who know how to use AI. It doesn't mean that all jobs will go away, by the way. And that's why you need to go and do the research. What role does AI play in today's world? Because in every field, it's going to disrupt. Can't go into a lot of detail. In Internet of Things, IoT. Because what happens is that Internet of Things is about how everyday objects are connected to the Internet. Today, a washing machine can be connected to the Internet. My brother has a washing machine in his house, which he can control if he's in his office, in his workplace. Now, if you are living in this world and I'm just scare you, that's why I'm telling you, go and research. Because for some of you, your career field is lying in those technologies. But I'm not here to train about them. I'm not even an expert, but I'm just highlighting to you some of the things that you can expect to be normal in your, in your generation. Yeah? For some of us, there are some older people who are just in shock about what's going on. Because technology just looks like magic nowadays. Yeah? So, connecting everyday objects to the internet. IoT allows for increased automation and data gathering, leading to improved efficiency and convenience. That's what will happen to machines. Many things can be connected to the internet. Number three, robotics. Robotics is advancing rapidly, yeah? And it's being used in industries such as manufacturing, healthcare, even banking. I work in banking, yeah? Today we use robotics to automate so, so, so many processes that used to be done manually. Yeah? That one. Blockchain, number four. Sasa, blockchain. This thing is going to be major. Guys, go and read about blockchain. There are books even in, in the shops about blockchain. Yeah? Online. You, this is about a decentralized and secure technology that has the potential to disrupt industries like finance, supply chain management, healthcare, by providing transparency and eliminating intermediaries. The, the, the ease of doing transactions in the future will be enabled by blockchain. Muna niangalia kama have just fallen from mass. Go and apply your mind to these things, guys. This is where the future world lies. In fact, in today's world, it's already working, isn't it? When you're talking about people selling uh, their art online, it's being enabled by blockchain technologies. Sawa, sawa. Go and read about blockchain. This one will take a central stage in finance going forward. Sawa, sawa. Three, uh, five, renewable energy. Technologies around solar, wind energy, all those kind of things. We're looking, we're in a crisis around energy. So you're going to see a lot around renewable energy coming up, yeah? Alternative fuel uh, uh, energy sources, yeah, away from the traditional ones. I can't go into detail, guys. I'm just giving you a snippet. I'm hoping to get your mind racing, yeah? So that you go and get that information. Sindio? Number six, virtual reality and augmented reality. These are transforming entertainment, gaming, and various industries. We're here to talk about gaming today. Yeah? This is one of the technologies that is enabling quite a lot to change in the entertainment industry. You know, traditionally, entertainment was movies. I'm telling you, <laughs> movies are almost being phased out. <laughs> that, that's the reality. Okay, they'll be there. But you know, now you can get your, in, your movies on YouTube and those places. Yeah? But the world of entertainment has been massively disrupted by, 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 by this. Yeah? So, because it simulates real life experiences as if you're already there. Today, you can uh, go online and purchase uh, 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 even clothing. And through these technologies, you can even see how you look in that dress before you've even bought it. Or you can even see how furniture will look in your house because of this technology. We're in church. Yeah? We need to combine our spirituality yeah, with knowledge of what's going on out here, isn't it? All these inventions are enablers for us to even prosper and thrive in uh, different areas of our lives. Number seven, biotechnology. 
advances in biotechnology as hearing her talking about STEM, very relevant as well. This is going to revolutionize healthcare, yeah? Agriculture, environmental preservation, things such as gene editing, synthetic biology, there's a massive fields in this place. If you're oriented the biology way, the science way, these are roots. If you're thinking about uh, uh, career fields to pursue if you're oriented around science, go and unpack biotechnology, massive. Number eight, 5G. The fifth generation wireless technology will revolutionize communication by enabling faster speeds, low latency, and better connectivity uh, for a wide range of devices and applications. Connectivity is an underlying thing. Connectivity across the globe, yeah? That's what enables people like Ryle to be able to do what? Train and tutor a kid in Bermuda. What will that be? What does that mean for your fields? Some of you will be doing working for companies that are based so far away from where you are. You need to start thinking like a global citizen. You get me? Do you get me? Yes. People, munanipata. Yes. You have to start thinking global. Because competition for talent will no longer be based on geography. Are you understanding me? So you need to be able to develop skill sets that are competitive globally. I hope that is sinking. You can't just be good in Kenya and think you will thrive. You've got to be the best in the best the world can find. That is the biggest implication with this connectivity thing. Yeah? Are your skills going to be relevant across the globe? This is a big one. This is a big one. Some of you have not entered the job markets, and that's why you might not understand my point. But I can tell you, for somebody who have, who's worked for a long time in the, in the world of work, I can tell you this is a big disruptor. You need to be able to, your skills need to be transcend geographical lines. Actually, geography doesn't matter anymore. Have you noticed? Some of you guys will be employed by companies that are not here, based here. I think the world of business will change significantly because of that. Anyway, I don't have much time to talk about it. So what should you do as a young person to prepare for the future? Number one, you need to develop digital literacy. This needs to become a normal thing for you. Yeah? It has to become a normal thing for you because technology will become pervasive. You must have a good understanding of digital tools eh, and platforms. The, you can't have an excuse that you, you don't know. Not at your age, guys. When employers will be hiring people like you, and anyway, most of you will be hiring yourselves, that's a topic for another day. Yeah? Things, you know, skills like coding, data analysis, digital communication will be a given. You get? It will be like basic. Yeah? It will be like basic. You just have to have it. So you have to be very digital. The second thing you have to be is agile. What does agile mean? Nimble, flexible, ready to change at a short notice. Not fixated on things. Because when a new technology comes and disrupts your world, you need to be able to shift quickly, isn't it? Change course. Not be stuck. I studied marketing. If that's what Ryle did, I studied marketing. I must get a job in marketing. It won't work. Yeah? You need to be dynamic enough to shift and change when the situation requires you. Because that's the kind of world we live in. Continuous disruption, continuous change is the order of the day. Don't even get shocked by it. Yeah? When we see change like COVID coming, it forced people into new fields. Some people, some fields were literally obliterated, will never be found again in this world because of that. So imagine that kind of a world where we have continuous crisis, continuous change, continuous disruption, requires you to be able to change at the drop of a hat. You get me? That's the world you're going to live in. 
So some, the, the, the challenge with the generation is that you're in, a be, in the between of, uh, in between, a generation before you that thinks a certain way, fixed a certain way, and they're trying to force you into their way. Do you know that's what happens? So your parent is trying to lead you a certain way. No, get a full-time job. You must do this kind of work. You must do this kind of course. That's not the world today. Actually, the challenge is with parents. Most of the time. Yeah? So, I've said what? Be digital, be agile. The third one. You must think entrepreneur. You guys, the days of employment are slowly fading away. The reality is you need to have an entrepreneurship mindset from an early age. Jobs are falling away, but not work. Jobs are falling away, but not... Are you getting the difference? Between jobs and work. So you need to be able to have a mindset of, I can employ myself. Yeah? How do I convert my skills and be an entrepreneur around my skills? How do I commercialize my skill set? You got it? That's a very different skill set. Different mindset. How do I monetize my skills, my, my strengths? That's an entrepreneurship mindset. But unfortunately, the system has trained us an employment mindset. Yeah? And that's why many of the young people are struggling. Because we left university thinking we must get a job. But in today's world, yeah, as jobs are falling down in terms of numbers, we must shift our mind to how do I create my own work? How do I monetize my skills and, and, and approach people, yeah, add value to them so that they pay me? You get it? Like what Riley is doing. That's a typical example. I have this skill, I have this strength in maths. How do I monetize it? She's not employed by anyone. She's created her own employment. That is the mindset we need to have. Okay. And we'll have more of these sessions later. I think we'll organize a career workshop soon um, to go delve deeper. I'm just touching. Three things have I said you need to do to prepare. Be digital, be agile, entrepreneurship thinking. Tasa, is that helpful? That is the way you need to frame your mindset. Even some of us have to shift it there. Because as jobs fall out, people will be laid off. People will be declared redundant. Yeah? I need to be thinking about myself as a skill. What skill sets do I have and how do I monetize them? All of us have, are in that space. So, this is just the mindset I want you to have, even as we're having this conversation on gaming. Yeah? Gaming is a a you know, when I listened to, the, for, to this discussion last time, very, very interesting field, yeah? So, for young people, you need to be curious. Continuously curious about different things happening in the world and how those can be platforms for you to leverage, for you to make a living. So you get out of the job mindset, Yeah? I don't like using the word hustler, <laughs> but yeah, because the, 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 the dictionary version of the word hustler is not really nice. You know that. But all of us need to think multiple streams of income. Are you getting it? Because if jobs will not be there, it means that because the wonderful thing about it is that God created us multidimensional. So all of us have multiple skills. That's what is so exciting. Yeah. That is now what's now God's wisdom, you know. Multiple skills we have, all of you. There is a gig world. Gig world enables you to then utilize all your skill set to make money. You know, unfortunately, a job limits you. I've been in a job for long. It limits you. But you see, when you think gig mindset, it begins to open many more opportunities for you. Maybe I know how to do dressmaking. It's something I can do two hours every evening. Sindio? Maybe because I'm a career coach, I can provide that service to people when they pay me. Yeah? I've been a HR person yeah? for, for long. I consult for companies on HR. Are you seeing those multiple? I'm just using my own example. Skills I have and how to monetize each of those skills. 
if I don't have a job. And that's how you guys must be your default setting. Some of us, it found us midway. <laughs> we have to shift our think thinking. But for you guys, it has to be default. It has to be your way of thinking from the word go. What are my skills? How do I monetize each of them? Yeah? How do, because God made us multidimensional. You don't just have one skill. I've had some of you are footballers. That's one thing. What other gifting do you have? Yeah? How can you utilize that? Yeah? Even the Bible talks about seven or eight avenues. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes. Seven or eight vehicles to make money. All of us have it. It's just that you've buried some of it or you're not aware of it. Yeah? You need that awareness of how I can pack. So let me not go further. I want to, to welcome Rev uh, to come and introduce our speaker. I, I don't have these details, sorry. Please come. So I want to introduce Tony to just come and take over from here. I know there's a team that has walked in, Karibuni. Just look for some space and make yourselves comfortable. Uh, the keynote speaker is about to speak. Uh, so, you know, when, when, when the man of God is about to speak, we're not allowed to move. Uh, everybody stays in one place. Let's welcome Mr. Tony with a hand clap. <laughs> yes. Sorry. He came with his daughter, and his daughter happens to be the age of my daughter. So when you mentioned your age, I thought I was, I was touched. So I can, I, can, I can sort of imagine the challenges that uh, he's going through, um, but he will introduce you. Is that okay? Are you okay to say hi? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Let us Hi. Hi, I'm Nicole, I'm his daughter, I'm a student at Alliance, I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, so, good morning. Um, my name is Anthony Okeo, um, and uh, I think I must say you're really lucky that uh, they are taking the time to actually give you this sort of fora to be able to hear the sort of things you hear, because I think uh, it is a special thing, uh, didn't happen to us. And uh, in the world that you're moving into, it's a world that you probably need a lot of this, and I think it's really kind of them to actually be having this going on. Uh, so um, <coughs> I'll do a bit of, um, I'll speak about gaming, uh, but uh, I'll also try and contextualize uh, what uh, Christina talked about by trying to buttress, I mean, everything that she said to give you sort of my history back up to the point of gaming. Uh, so by training, I'm an engineer, uh, electrical engineer from uh, Nairobi University. I think you're a student there. Who said you were a student there? Yeah, uh, so I was uh, here uh, studying uh, electrical engineering. But uh, interestingly, before that, I, when I was in high school, I actually wanted to be a doctor. So I actually spent my the entire first semester trying to change from uh, main campus to Chiromo, but it didn't work. But then today, I look back and I say, I mean, God works in his uh, ways because uh, I can't understand because uh, where I stand today, I don't think I would be happy as a doctor. <laughs> but, and then so I did electrical engineering. I was uh, very disgruntled when I was doing it. In fact, in second year, I tried to change to go to become a pilot. So I went for Kenya Airways. I've been in show pilot training program. My mom became harsh. I came back to uh, university. I proceeded, continued, finished. Uh, and then I think finally, <laughs> when we finished, uh, I got a chance now to go and now uh, study piloting for myself. So then I became a farmer. So in fact, the thing she's talking about, I mean, you actually need to be multi-talented. You need to spread your capabilities because your capabilities are actually way more than what you imagine. Yeah, because if I could tell you today, uh, uh, I, I, I think I run about uh, four or five businesses. I am a farmer. I mean, I do all, I'm a contractor. I am, you know, all these sort of things. <laughs> plus uh, gaming. Uh, so if I would come to gaming, I think, uh, because I think that is the main subject of today. It is, uh, the world is uh, literally, literally converging at gaming. Mm. And uh, I'll take you back to 2019 when uh, Matiangi was fighting with parents, uh, no, with the, young, with the youth about gambling. Mm. And when that was happening, there were two or three things that were happening globally. Uh, which I don't know whether you realized. Uh, uh, gambling itself, in fact, if you actually realize, gambling is also called gaming. I mean, it's an interchangeable thing. But uh, so so far, we've been trying to move away from the word gaming because uh, uh, the, the confusion between <laughs> what gaming is and what gambling is. <coughs> so we prefer to call it esports. 
but uh, truth is that it is gaming uh, at, at the bottom uh, of it all. Uh, so from what uh, the reaction that Kenyans gave to gambling actually showed that uh, people were very device ready. People had realized that through the devices, you could do <coughs> something and somehow end up making money. The only problem we had with this was uh, the morality of that, and that's why government was actually fighting gambling and the gambling entities. So it was at that point that uh, now as a businessman, uh, I think uh, I sat and asked myself a question. Uh, Sportpesa is making it big. Other gambling companies are coming and making it big. The youth are actually sort of caught in there, but then we have this moral issue about this because uh, we had cases of students spending school fees on gambling. Uh, uh, parents spending rent on gambling and so basically as much as there were a few winners it was breaking a lot more than it was building and so uh, what we said I mean uh, generally as a businessman as a Christian what then becomes your response to this in a way that is actually constructive and good and for, for good of community and, and, and moving forward at the same time there's a company called uh, Riot Games I don't know whether you guys know it or you guys anybody who games knows a game called League of Legends Anybody knows League of Legends? You know League of Legends, yeah. In 2019, a 16-year-old boy won $2.8 million yeah, in the finals of League of Legends. $2.8 million at that point, a dollar being at 100 shillings was uh, uh, 280 million shillings from you know, a day's event. And so uh, for us in business, we were seeing, okay, now guys have learned to use their phones. Uh, gaming is growing big in the West. How can we actually combine these two scenarios to be able to put together something that uh, changes the narrative and uh, or gives a counter narrative to gambling? And so we said, okay, fine. Uh, so eSport is actually good and it's big, but it's big in the West. But for whatever reason, uh, in Africa, eSport is sort of a middle class thing. Uh, and part of the reasons is because the consoles are expensive, you know, the gaming phones are expensive, you know, all those sort of things. So we said, okay, fine. Uh, because I'd been in the tech space for the longest anyway, uh, we said, okay, now how can we come and Africanize this story? Because Africa needs to get into this space, and Africa needs to get in this space in a way that works for Africa. As a banker, she tell you the history of banking. Uh, we had the multinationals, uh, Barclays and Standard, and, you know, then at some point, they were so elitist to a point where Barclays used to close accounts and tell you take your money if you cannot afford this sort of balance. But then equity came, and then equity said, okay, now, for that person who's not being considered, then let's take that person up. Uh, the same example applies to Safaricom and Airtel. Airtel came and Airtel was, okay, we'll give our services to UN, and you know, all those guys who can afford uh, 25,000 shillings in airtime and all. But then Safaricom said, why can't we come down to the person who's not being considered. The person who has a 50 bob, uh, which they can spend in the next 50, 20 minutes. But then, because uh, reliably, they actually are more <laughs> consistent customer than the bigger customer. And so he said, okay, fine. For gaming to take root in Africa, uh, we need to approach gaming from a context where you're actually bringing in the masses to gaming. Because uh, as it is, uh, uh, to play, which game do you play? Uh, you're a gamer. Uh, which one do you play? FIFA. FIFA. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anybody else who's a gamer? Uh -huh. FIFA. FIFA. Ah, yes. You see, the games they play, they're good games, I cannot say that they're bad games. But then for anybody else who has never gamed to actually come to your level, the problem is, the la in fact, even the language you use, they actually need to come and learn a second language <laughs> before they actually are coming and playing your games. Uh, the mastery of the consoles, the mastery of the, of the field, you know, all, all that. And so our thinking was, how can we come and re dumb down gaming enough to the point where when a Boda Boda guy, you know the way when they're waiting for a passenger nowadays, they, 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 they would bet. How can you bring it to a point where when they're waiting for a passenger, they're engaging in eSport, getting the same excitement, getting the same reward arrangement, that this is giving them, but in the process, actually they are learning something, they are benefiting something, and the cost is actually, the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole process is not breaking the family, or it's actually not costing uh, uh, the world anything. And uh, so at that point we gathered, uh, I, I, I brought together uh, a few friends, the last guy who spoke to you, Collins, is one of us, he's a director, he's based in Germany. I got five other directors, then I got about 11 young guys, and said, okay now, 
gaming is the future. Uh, and then, okay, the other thing that was also happening, and then uh, if you've noticed, have you noticed, uh, if I could ask any of you guys, who has ever, have you ever bought a newspaper, uh, the guy in black? Uh, uh, have you ever bought a no? Have you ever bought a newspaper? Yeah. You have. Okay, uh, that's a very rare case. I need somebody who's about eighteen. Uh, the birthday girl. Have you ever bought a newspaper for yourself? How frequent? Yeah, I can. When I was in high school, I would buy a newspaper Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. And there's actually a change of of trend of consumption on media content. Yeah, and if you if you see. Uh, uh, who knows how, how well Nation Media did uh, uh, last year in terms of profits. After trading for a whole year, Nation Media made 2.7 million shillings in profit. Yeah. So basically, traditional media is dying. Yeah. There's a PR firm called uh, Red House. Who knows about it? They actually shut down. Yeah. A standard group last month, who knows what happened? they laid off. So basically what is happening is the youth in terms of consumption of content are moving from traditional media to another way of consuming content. They are currently online. Yeah. But then online will leave its time. And let me give you the trends of how it worked. We had the age of the newspapers. The newspapers were consumed by the radios. The radios were consumed by the television. The television was consumed by the internet, where now we have uh, the social media and the influencer and all. Gaming is slowly, literally, eating up all of them and subsuming them all into a single platform. And that is why we tell you that gaming is actually the, 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 the future of the world. And in terms of value, if you look at esports today, if you take the movie industry, take the music industry, the entire entertainment industry as you know it, put together its value, all of it. Gaming is bigger than all of them in terms of value today. Yeah. So we might want to ignore gaming, we might want to embrace gaming, but actually our lives are going to be gamified whether we want or not. And New York Times bought a game, a puzzle game called Waddle. You know for how much? Okay, let me give you the context. It takes me, uh, it can take me about 30 minutes to construct a word puzzle game. Uh, they bought Waddle for a million dollars. Why is that? Currently, I'm having conversations with Royal Media and Nation Media. Both of them are asking me to have my platform on their platforms. As we move into next month, I don't know which bank you're working with. Absa, yes. Uh, something is about to happen. You know, the AKCB has been in rallying. Uh, Stanbeek has been in rugby. Coke Bank has actually adopted esports as their sports of choice. So from next month, you're actually going to be seeing uh, Coke Bank and esports. The other thing that's going to be happening is Uhuru Park is being opened on the 12th of December. Nairobi County is having the Nairobi Festival. Part of the Nairobi Festival will be involving esports. So that is how much gaming is actually coming to eat up our lives. Uh, so let me now contextualize it in the, uh, in the, in the nini of what us guys did. So our thinking was, for gaming to take root in Africa, because gaming is going to come anyway, the first guy that prepares to receive gaming in Africa in a way that, uh, you know, is uh, Africanized enough, in a way that the majority of the African population can actually understand gaming, is going to be the guy who's actually going to be ripping out of this. Because if gaming was to take root the way it has taken root in the West, by now it would, uh, it would have already in Africa. But for whatever reason, it actually, it's not doing that. But then the, another special thing about Africa, if you guys are, might not be aware, Africa, the population, we are, I think we are about a billion people right now. We are about 600 million uh, youth in Africa. So basically, and if it's the youth that are not buying newspaper, are not watching TV, are not listening to radio, then gaming is actually the space where you actually need to get them to. Yeah, so in terms of uh, oh, the efforts that we made is we said, okay, now we will build a platform, a platform that is African enough, a platform that is contextual enough, 
that uh, can actually bring together the entire you know, uh, African youth into a space that uh, Africa can actually say, okay, now this is our space, this we can relate with. And uh, as much as the pro gamers can actually continue gaming where they are, but then we have a platform where uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the house help, the mamboga when she's doing whatever, can play Candy Crush, you know, anybody else can actually do something. So what we did is uh, we decided, okay, now let's build a, a gaming platform uh, that can now be able to be pushed into the African scene but being a contribution of uh, Africa and uh, for Africans. And by a gaming platform, uh, basically it's a gaming store and, that's, uh, and we call it PlayOn. So currently PlayOn is uh, on uh, Play Store. Uh, uh, we yesterday we actually uh, also in talks with uh, this group called Transion. Transion are the manufacturers of Infinix, Itel and Techno. They put us all up on their devices yesterday and I think in about uh, three hours we got a download of about 21,000. So that's actually the ma the how much interest there is. So our approach to gaming is uh, in this context because we see uh, there's what the teacher was talking about, uh, the teaching issues. Uh, uh, because I think we, when we, because of morality, even if you have to approach gaming, you need to approach gaming from a perspective where it is conferring value to the family. And so we focus on three pillars. Uh, the first pillar is uh, entertainment, which is what typically they look for in FIFA and Dota, Dota 2. Uh, there is infotainment, is, that is where the media space has been at, because media has actually been giving you news. Gaming is actually now what is carrying news, and why New York, New York Times bought Waddle is because they're now trying to fit, force fit news into games, so that you're consuming <laughs> media content in a way that's entertaining because I think the generation that we are, we are the, 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 the guys coming up, uh, uh, attention, uh, uh, nobody wants to, uh, and if it can be cheaper and better, and if there can be something in need for me, then even better for them. And that's what gaming is actually offering. So our platform actually offers uh, 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 entertainment, uh, typical entertainment, uh, uh, entertainment, which is now what she's doing, because now we are building our games in a way that uh, we can use them to be able to pass messaging. And some of the things we're trying to solve, I think, and this conversation we can take up with you, you know, because you have issues like dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyslexia, and you know, all those. And games are actually the best to be able to help in all those. If you want to check a kid's motor skills, there are all these tests that doctors would give. You can actually give a game, somebody is playing a game, but you actually don't know that uh, somebody is picking data from the back, and they're using that to actually analyze something. In fact, if you, FBI has actually been even <laughs> recruiting using games. They come, as you guys are playing, what they're doing is they're watching for skills. Reaction time, strategy, sharpness, all those sort of things. Then they approach you and you think that they never knew you, but actually where they got you from was from a gaming tournament. So that is how deep gaming is, and that is how much we actually cannot avoid gaming in our lives. And uh, from the things that she was talking about in terms of skills, uh, the team I have is a team of about 11 young guys. Some of them are game developers, graphic designers, uh, web developers, you know, all this, because all the skill sets that are actually required to actually put an environment that is required. And we, as I told you, we are trying to build a game store. And uh, in the game store, we currently have built about 11 games right now. But we are moving to a point where we actually want to have 1,000 games in. But to have a thousand games in, it actually means everybody then becomes our source of content. And uh, as a source of content is uh, somebody comes up with a game that can be contextualized, can be used to push advertisement, can be used to push messaging, can be used for learning, then we actually we adopt it. And then we run tournaments of those games. Uh, the public pays subscription, uh, then we do revenue share. So that's actually how we try to actually get young guys to come in, get involved, and uh, you know, be able to earn off uh, this platform. And, uh, you know, in, uh, when we started out, we didn't know uh, how big the space was until we were actually in. And uh, currently, one of the most interesting conversations that he mentioned was, uh, you know, we are at the point where the French embassy actually came to us and said, okay, fine, uh, we need to send you to France to actually go talk to these investors on this, you know, and those sort of things. And it is because the West is actually also looking at Africa because in terms of uh, content for game creation, Africa has the most the deepest folklore, the deepest stories, the most exciting environment to actually build games around. Because uh, if you actually, I think, a game on cattle wrestling 
would be more interesting and relevant and would drive a lot more curiosity than you know a game on world war ii which is actually based in somewhere in the middle of germany or you know somewhere in, in there and i think that is actually what the west is actually looking at and why the focus is actually back on africa and so uh, and games nowadays even to in terms of uh, being able to produce small casual games you have tools online that can actually help you from what she was talking about and uh, we've actually had cases where i mean uh, somebody comes says, okay, I have this game, can you guys take me up? And we just say, okay, now for 100,000 shillings, can you swap the game? And you've actually been able to pay those sort of monies. And this is actually an opportunity that actually sits there for all of us. And uh, the other conversation I'm having right now is uh, with uh, the Saudi uh, Esports Federation. There is, uh, for footballers, uh, and I understood there are so many of you guys in here, there's the Prince Faisal who has been buying all the European League players, bringing them to Saudi Arabia. That same prince, uh, one of us actually went to meet the team this week, uh, and we are hoping for a follow-up meeting coming soon. What has happened is Saudi Arabia has actually put aside uh, $38 million to develop eSport and to develop gaming. Do you know how much that is in Kenya shillings? That is about $5.7 Shillings. Our budget annually is four trillion. Eh? <laughs> yeah, that those are the true things that are actually happening in terms of the context of gaming right now. In fact, he is putting in money that is enough to pay our president for twelve months and his deputy and his cabinet <laughs> and <laughs> Sakaja <laughs> and and build our roads and pay the Chinese and you know and do all this thing and buy medicine and do. A, Saudi Arabia is doing that in one year in the gaming space. So part of what we are trying to converse with them about is uh, to come through Kenya as their gateway into Africa. And uh, we went, did a presentation. There was uh, the event that the president was in Saudi Arabia for on Tuesday. You saw him talking about future investments. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of us was there. And uh, we gave the presentation and they said, yes, we are listening. Uh, let us take this conversation further. So I, 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 I guarantee you guys that uh, in terms of where the world is heading to, in terms of content consumption, in terms of uh, uh, media uh, space, uh, uh, gaming is actually it. And let me even tell you, uh, because uh, when the media houses started dying, uh, we had influencers coming in. Yeah, and influencers are in the space of uh, the social media space. I told you the growth from uh, a newspaper to radio to television to internet to gaming. So that's where we are. And influence is actually, a, it's a very temporary thing, and I think we, you, truth will bear me out in another three, four, five years as we move along. Uh, because the media houses are dying, corporates are finding alternatives to push their brands. But you see, the risk with influencers is I am hanging the reputation of my brand on the character of an individual. Yeah, because it works for me today, until tomorrow they are caught drunk, and then they're going down with my uh, uh, my, my brand altogether. So eventually, uh, business is very conservative. Yeah. And business will go to another business ultimately. So, and that's what we're trying to create in this space, where uh, we have uh, an entity that is actually now able to do what the influencers are doing by gamifying the corporate content and pushing it through. And I can give you examples how, of how we're doing this. And this is a conversation I've had with actually Royal Media and National Media Group. They're talking about you guys don't listen to uh, uh, what you call uh, appointment news content. Seven o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, you know, those sort of, sort of things. So the question they had was, how do I make uh, this young man find a reason to actually <laughs> come for seven o'clock news? And so we were telling them, okay, now, the easier thing to do is have a trivia, for instance, running at the end of the newscast. So what you do is tell him, out of this newscast, the clues for the trivia are part of the content of the broadcast. They will actually have him listening and forcefully consuming content yeah, with no force. The only thing you guarantee is uh, there's a voucher for pizza, and you know, there is all this, and you can, there's a, school, a gift hamper for school, and, you know, and those sort of things. And that is actually where the media is also heading to. Because I can guarantee, I, I tell you for real, uh, uh, media has approached us, nation, nation media group uh, 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 have approached us.
because everybody is actually struggling to get in that space because it's actually showing you that, uh, yes, uh, the influencers are running their course and gaming is actually the space that is actually coming in as the next thing. And to be engaged in this space, you don't need uh, any skills that are so, 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 so far out there uh, that uh, would uh, be able to get you into, uh, into gaming. What you need is uh, very, very, very simple good ideas. Uh, there's a company from India that had four puzzle games that was bought by some uh, Scandinavian uh, country, I think for about uh, $2 billion for casual puzzle games. So if you actually have content that is just good enough, and you know, to even create these puzzle games, they even tools that can help you right now off the net, and uh, you know, and you can build, for, for as long as it attracts, uh, it, it, it attracts eyeballs, it can grip people in terms of time, you're able to push uh, subliminal uh, messaging or uh, uh, covert messaging through the content. That is what the world is actually looking at, and that's actually what gaming is actually now turning out to be. And even for them, the games that they play, uh, there is uh, people who actually now try and force brands into the games. Yeah, so you play FIFA, but as you're seeing the, the, the pitch, all the size, the, all the banners, and those are corporates that actually are paid the developers for FIFA to put those things in there. And they pay really big money. And you see now, where I actually feel sorry for the corporates right now, is uh, they're sort of not knowing where to now take their content. Because TVs are not giving them the numbers that they want. Uh, radios are not giving the numbers that they want because they're targeting, uh, our population is going away. You guys are actually the future owners of money. So they're actually looking for you. And the earlier they get you, the better for, for them, uh, for sustainability for them. And so what needs to happen is uh, it is now people like you now coming up with, uh, okay, can I do this that then can help uh, uh, ABSA to be able to you know push their content through this game? Because then I know that as whether it is a learning game, a math game, yeah, but then it is ABSA sponsored with ABSA content, which can even be part of the game is, you know, uh, where are our branches found, what is the procedure for opening an account, but you see it's in the context of playing the game. They're achieving what they're achieving. Uh, the teacher is achieving whatever they want to achieve, but you become the biggest money maker in this scenario because you are solving ABSA's problem. And those are the sort of solutions that actually the world is looking for today. And so that is actually what we are building now. So uh, our, our platform is uh, basically trying to now, you know, encourage guys like you to come up with as many game ideas as you can. Uh, we will help you build them. We'll have you on our platform play on. We will commercialize them together with you. Then it, and why it is actually really easy to, <laughs> to, to become rich on gaming and why everybody is trying to invest in this. You know, all other businesses, as an influencer selling a, for a shop uh, on uh, uh, Kwenange Street, your jurisdiction or your, your, your geography of sale is within the Kenyan borders, and most of the time within the borders of Nairobi. Yeah. But uh, if you do a game, then you instantly access the global, I mean, everybody on the globe is actually your, your target client. We are charging half a dollar for access for 24 hours. But then we are targeting 400 million youth in Africa. So when you actually go commercializing, then you see how easy it actually is to translate one day's effort into a million shillings. And that's where a lot of millionaires are actually growing out of gaming. And the effort is, the initial effort is the creativity for the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if the concept is good enough, uh, I have as many downloads from China, out of curiosity, then downloads from Philippines, out of curiosity. So actually that tells you the potential, that the day we actually go out and say, okay, now we are formally going out. We are playing our tournaments uh, every day. We have uh, 10,000 uh, Bob winner every one hour, you know, that sort of thing. Then my target then is not Nairobi, is not Kenya, is actually Africa and everywhere else, and it's actually the rest of the world. Uh, we've developed, and strategically, we've actually right now built three games for, uh, one for Kenya, one for Ethiopia, one for Uganda, one for Tanzania, because we're also trying to be conceptual. But we are looking now for guys like you, who can actually come up with stories, because a game does not have to be a game built already. A game is actually ba based on a beautiful story that is tellable, and that can actually engage, that somebody would actually want to go into, because it's entertainment at the end of it all. Uh, so, uh, I think so, in terms of uh, 
what I'll tell you uh, uh, for, 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 for relevance uh, in terms of how this would apply to you is uh, you had the teacher come and without prompting, she says she has a global client. Uh, she needs uh, solutions that actually brings these people together. But you need the child to learn without the child feeling like it is a forced learning. Yeah, it is entertainment, but at the end of the day, it is done. Uh, and I'll give you an example of one of the games you're creating. It's called uh, uh, Shaka Zulu. And we are trying to use the story of Shaka Zulu, uh, traversing through time, through space, over the African stories. So you have Shaka Zulu coming from South Africa, then uh, uh, coming and meeting Kijekitile Ngwale in Tanzania. So you build that story around there. Then Luanda Magere and Wango Makeri. Then they can move around and move, meet Mansa Musa. You know, and basically talk about the stories of the pharaohs you know, and all that. What this does is, uh, even in terms of saving culture, for a kid, it is stages of the game. Yeah. But what actually happens by the time they're done with the game, they know every story of Africa without anybody actually ever forcing them to, you have to learn this, then it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here. And that's why gaming is actually, is actually now the only option that everybody has in terms of pushing content. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's why the reason, that's actually the reason why New York Times would buy a puzzle game for a million dollars and nobody understands why. Yeah, so, and uh, it is in the simplest of ideas, in the simplest of ideas. Uh, Candy Crush uh, is a very, very, very simple game. And uh, the amount of money it has made, because I think it took them probably, I don't imagine it took them more than two months to build Candy Crush. But then they're billionaires today. Uh, uh, Riot Games, without even having, in fact, they, they, they do basketball games, but then they're bigger than NBA in America, but then they are a game. Yeah. So uh, basically what I'll tell you is uh, the focus is here. And uh, even the CSICT, uh, they're looking for content. And uh, the, the president actually had talk, spoken to, uh, there's a fund from the US I think they're holding around, I think, uh, two billion Kenya shillings in terms of content creators. And so these are the sort of things they're looking for. And they're looking for content that is actually, it's not just content for the heck of content to make guys laugh. It's content that actually adds value and gaming becomes the best way to actually insert value into content. Uh, so, I mean, I think uh, as much as possible, what I would say in terms of gaming is um, uh, you might be a good storyteller you might be a good animator. You just might be a good narrator. You might be, you know, or have an interesting scenario uh, that you can think of. It, it takes just that to be able to actually transform that into a game. And, and we are actually open to conversations because, we, uh, like I said, we are a gaming store. Uh, come with the idea, uh, we will listen to you, we'll co-create the game together with you, we'll place it on the store, we'll find a client for it, we'll commercialize it, and this can be something that you, you actually, you'll be earning from when you're just walking around town pocketing and whistling without, you know, having uh, to do anything. And, and, and I can tell you that I have seen this work. And <laughs> my first example I was telling you, I, I ran the first KCP results on SMS. <laughs> And I know the, the power of the economy of 10 shillings. And uh, I started running the results on a Friday evening. And I think by Monday, 10 a.m., I had made about 7 million shillings. And that is what these things are capable of. That is what these things are doing. And that's actually why I've actually gone into this space, because I know how this thing works. I ran the tracking for ID services. It was another 10 of 20 bob. So basically, it's basically it's, it's there are, those are the old gamifications of approach to service, customer service. Yeah, yeah. But now we actually now everybody has a smartphone or every other third person has a smartphone. So we are in the spaces of these guys. If we can actually insert ourselves into their phones through simple entertaining content, we it's very 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 easy to move yourself from where you are into a millionaire without knowing how you actually become a millionaire. And it's happening to a lot of guys, I can tell you guys. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I, I, I didn't want to prepare notes because I wanted to speak from my experiences because these are things that I'm actually seeing. This is uh, what I'm feeling. This is the observations I'm making. Uh, and uh, it is the truth. And it actually pains me. Uh, so I say, OK, I'm a generation that is actually going out. Uh, now, and you can confirm that because I don't like tying my laces. I think I'm too old for that anymore. But uh, for you guys, 
the space is there. Because I can guarantee you, nation media will transform into nation digital, and that will be it. Citizen Royal Media Services is going to whittle down into citizen digital, and that will be it. Standard media, whether they'll, they'll survive or not, I don't know. But if they survive, they'll survive as, as, as their digital forum. But then that actually means you have removed all of them as players in terms of uh, content pushing. And uh, all of them are looking for games to actually insert into that, those spaces. So anybody who can actually rush into that space will actually be standing shoulder to shoulder with all these media houses, competing for all the corporate advertisement, advertisement cash. And uh, she can tell you what their budgets are <laughs> in terms of pushing. <laughs> It's literally, that's actually because that's what sustains them. Every corporate, that's uh, advertisement money is actually what they are about. And that's what the media houses are surviving of. The media houses are now realizing, no, uh, we need to gamify this. We need to gamify this because we need to talk to this young boy and, uh, you know, people around his age, uh, uh, beneath and, and, and a little above. So this is where the future is. Uh, and we, if we make a mistake again, I think, as Africa, What's going to happen is uh, the West is going to come, then uh, define the space again for us the way they've defined everything for us before. Uh, and then we'll be again consumers, uh, uh, being amazed at how Elon Musk is a billionaire and how Jeff Bezos is a billionaire and how everybody else who's not an African is a billionaire, but then they're making the billions from Africa. And uh, why that, I say, because Africa, has, as I said, has the youngest uh, 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 age group of the young guys. And that is what the world is actually focusing on. Uh, because uh, you, because the middle class in Africa is also growing, uh, as we speak. So a lot of you guys, by the time you're actually growing up, you'll actually be, uh, you'll be wealthier than your parents. I almost can guarantee that. Uh, and uh, this content uh, that, uh, and, 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 and the corporate and everybody else will be looking for you. So if we can come and define and occupy this space as Africa, where uh, mm -hmm. for me, I come up with a game on Luanda Magere, he comes up with a game on something else, comes up with a game on something else. So that by the time the West is coming, Africa is actually so full of its own content, content that's actually useful uh, uh, for infotainment, entertainment, and e-sport, that there's actually no space. So that we don't marvel at a white man making money off of Africa and becoming a billionaire on African cash. Uh, because that is, if we don't occupy the space, that's what's going to happen. And that's the, what we are trying to, you know, in our own small way or big way, try to lead uh, the, the, the youth in Africa to be able to try and uh, do that. And I think uh, to the extent that we can, we've tried to do really well because we've built uh, a platform that is, I think, good enough to actually carry the games. So anybody who actually has a game con concept, we can actually carry you. We've uh, managed to broker partnerships with Safaricom so that you can actually pay using airtime and PESA, all those sort of things. We've talked to Kina MasterCard, you can now pay using card. Uh, we are speaking to other uh, international payment integrators to allow for that space to happen. And so what will actually be happening is, with your small game, we place it up, uh, a million guys come and pay. If a million guys pay half a dollar each because nobody is feeling pain at that point and then we go out the money, whatever proportion, you actually are very, very capable of walking away with a million shillings a day uh, for the single effort of the game that you played over three days because it never take you that long unless the game is really big. Yeah, uh, but then the fact that uh, the county is trying to get into that space, everybody is trying to get into the government is trying to get into that space, actually tells you this is where the, actually the future is. So I think uh, that is uh, what I have in mind uh, unless now probably I would take questions if anybody has. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you're feeling but uh, uh, I think we have opportunities. I don't know how you're feeling, but uh, is your mind racing a bit? These young people here who have g g stories and ideas. Did you hear those numbers? A million a day. Did you hear that? And all he says is you have an idea, you have a story, you have a concept. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking, but uh, I don't think we have any excuse. Hmm? In your field, whatever the field is, there's an opportunity there. I can already see mine. Yeah? Let's hear from a few of you. Feedback. Just give us some feedback. What are you hearing? What questions do you have? Comments? 
Let's just hear from some of you. Let's interact. So, so. This is an open session. I knew you had something to say. Uh, good morning once again. Um, mine is a question. I'm not an animator, but uh, I'm a big fan of animations. So there's an animation called Barry Tales. And uh, recently, as I, watch, uh, as I was watching a similar episode, they covered the story of the Kenyan culture. The matatu, where they were saying in Kenya, there's a culture where we have matatus, and they have the loud music. Now, is the same idea concept, can it be used in a game? Like when I grew up, we had our own Kenyan superheroes. Like we, are, we used to have Makmende, but now currently we have games for Superman, Spider-Man. Now, if, if someone can come up with a game for McMend, I think. <laughs> OK. Can, can I, if I, before I answer you, I want to give a challenge. And I'm offering something. I want to buy one of you lunch at Serena, uh, you, you, together with uh, Pastor Rono, uh, in the next two weeks. We are developing an equivalent of Candy Crush. We need to name the game. So uh, share the your, your proposal with uh, Pastor Rono. The one we take, uh, I owe you lunch, whatever you want to eat at Serena in two weeks. Yeah. So then I think to come and <laughs> to answer your question, let me give you guys a very, very practical idea on gaming, gamification, and the story has taken. Uh, if you did a very, very simple, and this is a challenge to you, and if you actually are willing to take it up, I'll actually take you up on it. In Nairobi, Matatu is a culture. That is what the world can be curious about to know about Nairobi. And in fact, we are actually known for it in, in the context of what is unique about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is actually a true story that Nairobi has. But remember, Nairobi is a city. A city has businesses. Uh, uh, you get, d does any of you know Pokemon Go? Yeah. So, and some of the things that I actually had at the back of my mind, and uh, which is actually something that I'll be working on, and I would actually want to challenge you to now take it up, is uh, look at Nairobi in a matatu ride. The what are the challenges of getting to a matatu? So you go to the stage, then the, all these makanga wants to lie to you to go to this one, and can be image, then you realize you're the only one in there, you know, those sort of things. <laughs> Until the matatu jars, and then you leave. So those can be your typical challenges of now your matatu ride. But then to commercialize your matatu ride, then you can get a shop that has a treasure in it. So it can be a cloth shop, it can be a uh, backless bank that has a vault that has this unique thing that if you win, then we can open for you an account. I know, that sort of thing. So it's a ride to, to all the Barclays Bank branches of Nairobi, but you're looking for this one branch that has the vault that has, you know, you reach it and then there's all this reward. What does that do? You are conserving and broadcasting the story of Kenya, bringing out our culture to the world. Basically, you're Africanizing the story. But then you're solving a problem of trying to get, uh, 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 let me now use somebody as an example, trying to get, uh, uh, no, no, let me use him again. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get him to be able to understand what does, you know, by the time he's done, he knows everything about uh, uh, ABSA mm, in a way that he does not need to run an advert to teach him about ABSA. Yeah. Mm. Then if whatever the treasure is, comes with uh, the open for you an account that has 10,000 shillings already predeposited in the account, then he has school fees or he has shopping for the school. Yeah, you see when that happens, so question is how many guys would actually want to play your game when Abza announces that today we've also put another, another piece of treasure in the vault? You'll actually have probably 200, 300, 400,000 guys coming to play the game. At 10 Bob Beach is actually 4 million Bob. Yeah. So the question is, uh, how much do you actually want to make that story so that we can go together and sell to Abza uh, and get him to play because another million of them will actually come, I guarantee you. Yeah. And you see now, what you've done is you've taken money that Abza would have given to Nation Media and Royal Media to run an advert, and the Kitambo, they used to take them to South Africa for shooting before they put back. Yeah. And you're actually consuming all that money locally, sitting at home. So does that get give you the answer of what you want? Uh, and it's actually my challenge for you. It's not an idea. <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> I mean, I was just thinking, uh, I mean, Danny there, you're in a travel industry. What game can you come up with 
around showcasing Kenya's huh? sites that people should come and see. You get? Everything can be gamified. Everything about our lives can be gamified. Today, I can tell you, because I'm a HR specialist, we're gamifying training. Because people don't want to just sit and listen to a boring guy training you slide by slide. Kwanza nyinyi, hamtaki hizo. Sindio? Yeah. Everything can be gamified. Accounts can be gamified. Uh, uh, Gideon. Law can be gamified. Muna amka? Hello? The football players? Naskiaje? Are we together? Amam, we are lost. Are we seeing what he's seeing? Do you know that is your world? Eh? Even mine now. I also have to transition into it. Even the Christian messages need to be gamified. Maybe you can come up with that story. You get it? Look at all the possibilities that exist. How will the, how will the church evangelize the world? It has to be gamified as well. Remember, so for those who were here last time, Pastor Collins talk, talked us through a church that meets in a game, in a virtual space. Renew your mind. Yeah? Transform your thinking. We're so used to brick and mortar. But that's not the world that this generation here lives in now. Yeah? Questions, questions. Please, guys, this is your opportunity. Ask. Congo. Congo is another frontier. <laughs> Good afternoon. Sorry, I came late, but I'm trying to understand something. I have two questions. I know my question might, I don't know if you like it or not, but let me ask. <laughs> you know, any sector has invisible forces or laws, you need to obey. Can you tell us about that? And then also, I want to ask, you know, sometimes people, great people, especially people who develop great things, they have failures, experiences. They don't tell people the truth. I might spend like days and hours. At the end, it did not do anything. I'm not going anywhere. So can you tell us about that experience? Because if I spend like two hours developing a concept, which actually is not a concept, and get rejected, can you imagine? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, so in terms of regulation, in fact, when we began, government had a problem with us because of uh, the uh, intermix of gaming and gambling. So uh, we did not know where to place ourselves. <laughs> so we went to BCLB, actually went to BCLB <laughs> for a license. And so we had to walk them through step by step in terms of what we do. And finally they said, uh, because uh, gambling by its nature is chancing. But uh, uh, video games is actually your skills. So if you're winning, it's your skill. So it's pretty much like football or tennis. I mean, basically, you beat the other person or you beat the machine based on skills. Uh, so uh, finally, BCLB ended up giving me a letter of no objection saying, OK, now, uh, we don't understand what you're doing, but just go do what you're doing. If anybody asks you, come back and tell us. We'll see how to deal with it later. But then now, the beautiful thing that happened is uh, uh, Kenya, we formed, they formed Esports Kenya Federation. Yeah, so there's a federation for esports in Kenya. And uh, interestingly, Esports Kenya Federation has actually adopted our platform, I play on, for, 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 for casual amateur gaming. So in terms of law and cover, we actually covered. So I think we're actually very comfortable. And Esports Kenya Federation is actually part of the World Global Federation of, uh, and that's why we are talking to Saudi Arabians, we are talking to the French Federation, we are talking to all these guys. Then uh, in terms of failure, and uh, what I was telling you, where, where I actually started by saying you guys are lucky, is uh, 
uh, uh, we as uh, uh, the company we run is called Rubik's Digital. The platform is called Play on Games on Play Store. We, we saw the challenge. And uh, in fact, let me even now begin how the challenge began. Uh, there's a day I was called uh, by uh, some people from Iran. The Iranians had come to Safaricom. They had some games that they wanted to uh, deploy on Safaricom platform. Uh, Safaricom was not ready. There are some things I've done with Safaricom. So Safaricom actually referred the Iranians to us. So I went and sat with the Iranians and listen to what they were talking about, listen to what they were talking about, listen. And then I, I, I said, okay, fine. Uh, what you are trying to do might not work for now because it needs preparation because people will actually have the problem of separating what you're doing from gambling, uh, for, uh, for, for example. But then you said, okay, now, uh, uh, in the leap of faith, we actually traveled to Iran to go and see how they develop these things and how they do all these things. And then that's when I also started studying pro gaming. Then, uh, so for me, the first biggest challenge that we had was uh, how do you reduce what the pro gamers are doing, what the Iranians and the rest of, of guys in Philippines and China, everybody who's actually developed gaming are doing, and uh, simplify it to a point where it actually, the context works for Africa. So that was the biggest problem. And so uh, my problem was because what was happening before was guys were developing games then throwing them on Play Store. Then hoping that it would get traction on Play Store, good enough, that it somehow they'll be able to now commercialize that aspect. But then we said, no, that cannot be it. You actually need a vehicle that a corporate understands, that takes the interest of the corporate and imbues that into the game, then so that the corporate has a reason to pay mm -hmm. the young developer. Yeah. Then everybody now has a reason to come because uh, the corporate is giving the reward. Him is coming for the reward, but in the process, he's picking what the corporate wants. You know that sort of thing. So the challenge was actually now putting it together, and uh, uh, that was actually the biggest thing uh, uh, that uh, we, we had. And uh, so I think uh, in the magnanimity, magnanimity of what we had, he said, "Okay, now uh, l to give the young guys a chance to get into this space and succeed with us when we succeed, we actually give them shareholding." Yeah. So everybody came and they had. Uh, a small stake in whatever we were building. And now they actually shareholders us together with us. Uh, uh, 10 young guys owning 10% of the company. So that was the other thing because now had I just come and given the talk in a forum like this and told guys develop, then I would still have left them with the same problem of having to post these things on Play Store and hoping that they get traction. So he said, okay, now I know what I know. I've dealt with government long enough. I've dealt with corporates long enough. Why can't I then now uh, you know, uh, create an angle that can actually force money to come into this space. And so that, that was actually our biggest thing. Then the, the third problem that we had was now, you know, distinguishing gaming and gambling, uh, which now we are lucky the federation came in and the world is doing. And then you see Muslims have actually have the biggest problem with gambling. But uh, the prince of Saudi himself is now investing five trillion shillings into this space. So you can actually, re so the religious issues are now aside. So that would actually have been the other problem which we are now trying to, to, to fight. Then the other bigger problem that the young guys would have, have had was, okay, now I've, I've built the game, it is ready to, for play. But then how do I distribute the game? Because me distribution mechanism then becomes a problem. And that's why now we went now to a transition group. Transition group, the, uh, the manufacturer of Infinix, Techno, and ITEL. They're actually 60% of the mobile devices in Kenya, as we speak. Yeah, 60% of devices in Kenya, as we speak today. So if you have them, your platform on there, then you have on 60% of the devices locally. They are on 45% of the devices in Africa, today as we speak. 45%, nearly half of the continent is them. So we've also eliminated the issue of distribution. Now we are now just looking for money for uh, you know, I incentive. So that, uh, because I mean, truth is, I know, if we take a million shillings and put on a game of draft, and then uh, ABSA, their, uh, their, their logo is on one of the pieces, and then I play them against cooperative banks, so they're paying, and cooperative bank are <laughs> paying for the other one, and you put a million, you largely have four million guys coming to play. And that's how we built our platform. And th now that is actually now what we're trying to actually now encourage these young guys. It is the simple games that actually catch. It is a simple game that make you very, very rich, very, very, very fast. Then now out of pleasure, we can develop the bigger games. So I think <laughs> that is what.
Okay, mine is, um, okay, it sounds good. Eh? <laughs> of course, I'm already thinking of things I can do. But I have this question about, um, in t they're called IPs, intellectual properties. You know, you know an idea, I can't have, uh, I, can, I can have only one very good idea that can sell. But at the same time, I don't want to be ignorant and believe we're in church and we can just trust anybody. We've seen musicians and they're called what? Talent managers. Um, so I don't know what, what measures have you taken into place to protect um, our creativity? Because someone can, there was this narrative of these people who ask others to pitch their ideas. I'll come pitch a very good idea, you will reject it. But back, at the back of your mind, you know this is a very good idea. So you've rejected my idea, but actually you're going to implement it. So what measures are there that my creativity is protected even as I come to you? Uh, uh, I largely begin from in the one of other many hats that I wear. <laughs> I'm the one who has developed the system for Kenya Industrial Property Institute <laughs> for online application of patents and trademarks and industrial designs. <laughs> so in terms of that space, <laughs> no, I'm actually very sensitive to that. Yeah, I'm actually very sensitive to that. And uh, where, uh, and uh, what I say, and I say, we. Uh, I've done this as a business. For me, it is one of those things that I'm doing as I move into my old age. But it is a future for everybody else. Yeah. And so uh, what we t when you talk of content co-creation, this is how we work content co-creation. I have developed the store. You come up with uh, the concept of a game. Your game can be at the, the stage of uh, just an idea. It can be a game that is ready. If it is ready, then what we'll need to agree on is how do we collect data so that you can generate what they call leaderboards. You can actually you know, run a tournament and uh, come up with a winner. So uh, if it's an idea, then we actually ideate together, develop together, because internally we actually have the capabilities to develop the games. If it's a game that is ready, then we develop together. And in fairness, what can actually be done is the idea is yours or the game is actually yours. When registering it as an IP, we register it as an IP that is co-owned by you and us. Because ultimately what we're looking for is revenue share. I have a way of pushing you to market. I have a way of fin helping you finish the product. I can actually, I'll still actually be able to put into your product to actually perfect it uh, to a point where it can actually be commercialized. And so, so if we actually own the IP together, because it's the same arrangement that I'm having with Transition Group. Uh, uh, they are selling my platform and then we are sharing. And so what we've done is as downloads happen, I am able to see, you're able to see. As subscriptions happen, we are running a, a game on your a tournament on your game. You are able to see, we are able to see, and we say, okay, now it was uh, ten people who paid a hundred bob. It was a thousand bob. The revenue share is this. Then that's yours. This is ours. You know, and that that, that sort of thing. So, th and I think part of actually what I would actually even want to work with the younger is as we do that, because I, I was uh, in the conversation. I, I had I was called by the board of Kenya Industrial Property Institute uh, about two years back, and I was telling them, in terms of uh, what the youth own in terms of what they're actually keeping in their brains, in terms of value, we are holding a lot. Yeah, and so I was telling them, I mean, they need to find an angle to, to, to push these ideas to actually come and be protected. And so to help you save on that, I actually would not mind absolutely. And it's actually probably the path that we'll be taking with the content co-creation, co-creators who work with us. Yeah. Elijah, yeah. you're sure you don't have a question? No, I'm processing. I'm just still processing a lot of stuff. Amma, your head is spinning in many directions. Spinning, spinning, like <laughs> spinning. Yes, please. Um, I have a question. Actually, I have two. Um, your company, does it mainly focus on actualizing gaming ideas or does it also focus on training and building game developers? Um, another question is, have you worked with uh, the Kenyan team, the Dota 2 gaming team? And if you have, would you mind telling us a bit about it? Because I'm a bit interested. Okay. Uh, so in terms of content pushing, that is actually the conversation we're having with uh, Allianz. Uh, and the French Embassy, uh, uh, together with uh, 
ADMI, who are backed up by uh, a French company called Rubica. Uh, so because, you know, what we've done so far is uh, we've put in our money in trying to put this together. So what we're trying to ask them is uh, if they can actually work with us to build a lab, and it's a conversation we're also having with UNESCO, uh, so that uh, for the people who can physically come, then they can, uh, there's a physical space to come, then we now do what you're talking about. But for those who cannot, then we give an online access where they can actually keep like GitHub. You keep throwing your work, we keep correcting, you know, those sort of thing, and that's actually something that we're working on. Yeah, and then on Dota 2, you know the beast. Yeah, he's actually, he was with the team of the prince in Saudi Arabia on Tuesday. So yes, we're working with them. I know the last the lady who went, uh, in fact, it's actually an example that is live. Uh, in August, uh, there was uh, the Prince uh, uh, Faisal hosted uh, Gamers 8. Uh, a, a lady from Kenya went and played uh, Dota 2. And uh, guess how much she won? A three-day event. Huh? Uh, give me a figure. Uh, give me a figure, Mr. Travel Agency. What do you think she won? <laughs> No, it wasn't that much, but she actually got five million Kenya shillings. Wow. Yeah, for, 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 for playing a game. <laughs> yeah, so even for those of you who actually have skills in that, there's actually a lot of money to be made in this space. Yeah. So I don't know, have I answered both? So I think right now what we are capable of doing is uh, you come with an idea, then we walk you through, then we actually build together. You are, because for me, the best way to learn is to do. Yeah, we have a concept, then we work on the concept. By the time we actually through the concept, the, everything you need to know about gaming you actually, in, ter in terms of development, yeah. For me, I find that more practical than just telling you things and giving you notes. is called Bernard. He's whispering to me something. But anyway, it's all about, I like probably the point you've made, eh? but let me start it this way. You know, I like the experiences you've shared, and probably for somebody who is uh, a non-starter in this, sort of to take a bit of time to be able to pick what you've said. But I think uh, the key thing that I really like is that you're telling us you can gamify literally everything, a story you have in your life. And he was whispering to me because we are working closely with him. He's doing some football coaching and stuff, uh, working in the you know more low-income areas. And so he's actually wondering, how easy is it to probably incorporate this into esports because they're very passionate about football, as it were. And thinking about, um, and this now I'm also thinking loud around that, you know, if you have okay, you have a situation where you have the fans who want to come and probably watch a game going on. You have the footballers themselves. These footballers come from a, a, a family. So all these entities need to be part of sort of uh, uh, that ecosystem, so to speak. So how easy is it? I know you've already mentioned it in passing because by you saying that you can literally gamify anything. How easy is that? How, what is the process that can be involved? I know you can make it in few words, so I don't know whether that makes sense. But basically that's the sort of the question that I suspect is going through their minds. This is what I'm doing. Um, I'm a footballer, I'm operating among this uh, tough uh, sort of a situation, but how can I use e-gaming or e-sports to be able to build a story around that? Okay, I'll, um, I'll go back to some of the examples that I've used and probably just re-emphasize the, the examples. And you'll tell me whether this actually answers it. And uh, there is, I'll give you an example. There's a game that we've just developed, it's a tug of war. And you guys have seen every time there's uh, online a beef between Kenya and Tanzania and South Africa, two see across and across and across and across. <laughs> so our question was, how do you settle <laughs> who's the winner, for instance? So basically, it is a, a scenario that is real. Uh, it is a challenge that is there. What you need to do is translate it into something that then can be translated into money. And this is what we did. <laughs> so we developed a very, very simple game where it's like a tug of war. And it's a simple, very simple tug of war. You simply pull to your side. Yeah. So this is a subject statement. And on this, as a Kenyan, I'm pulling this way. As a Tanzanian, I'm pulling this way. So who will pull the most 
so that the number of you know pulling away uh, with a million and three million, you can actually declare Kenya have actually won. But then in the process again, I'll use ABSA. ABSA can come and say, okay, what's the co content uh, contest about? It is about <coughs> one of the ones I saw was uh, which is the most economically developed between the two, for example. ABSA then coins their message as the background content of the tug of war. <laughs> you have uh, four million guys doing this thing for fun, but ABSA can reward every random 30th or 100th or 60th guy who pulls whichever side. So what, 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 what is happening therefore is, uh, what I'm saying is this, you take, what is my scenario? Is my scenario interesting enough, challenging enough, has issues enough that you can actually now translate this into something that everybody finds a place to actually come and plug onto. Yeah, in the simplest way. So yes, uh, again, from what you said, we, we, our idea is to actually gamify the African context. Every African scenario that we can, because that we can relate with. And even out of curiosity, you'll actually see the number of Japanese will actually come here, because one of the numbers give you, you know, Eliud Kipchoge is actually, you know, Tergat is more famous in Japan that is actually is in Kenya. Yeah, that is how th much the East Asia actually takes us. So if you actually develop a game that is actually contextually here, you might get a lot more fans even across the other side than, than here, here. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, w what we do is we take your scenario, then we translate your scenario into a challenge, and then give an angle for a third party to come and fund the challenge, and then throw the challenge to the public. Yeah, so that is exactly the ecosystem that we are looking at. Hmm. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yeah, um, my name is Eric. Uh, just want to appreciate. You know, usually um, the average age here is you know plus thirty, but today I can see there's quite a number of, of, of youthful uh, people here. My question is on play on and how you guys share revenue. So let's say I come with a game that I would like developed, um, and you said that I think your charges you charge people about half a dollar to use the game. So do you charge people half a dollar to use like all the 11 games you've built or just the specific game that um, probably outcome and, and have developed? Um, how is that? And you said it's 24 hour access to the game. Is it 24 hour access to the game or to the whole like, um, to your whole suite of games? Yeah, that's, that's my question. Yeah, okay, I think, uh, so uh, uh, in Pleon, there are several things we're trying to achieve, which I'll tell you, is uh, uh, one, uh, we, our games are all, you can actually move in there and play any game. So basically access to all the games is uh, literally free if you just want to play. But then when we organize a tournament, then for you, because a tournament has a reward at the end, uh, the reward can be uh, cash that is being offered by the house or uh, a corporate coming to give a gift hamper or them deciding to pay school fees for somebody you nomination, know, you know, those sort of things that are I impacting lives <laughs> beyond just the game itself. So that is the angle that we actually try and work at. And so when we now say we are going to run a challenge on your game X, and say it's a game that runs uh, 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 from, uh, you know, uh, we are giving it 30 minutes of play, yeah, then we have a subscription for participation into that tournament. Then we have uh, a graduated sort of uh, uh, revenue share. It's actually the same thing I do with the services I do with Safaricom, where we say, okay, now, because uh, to challenge you to also give me content that is actually en exciting enough, it needs to be, the measure of how exciting it is, is the traction it gets, the number of guys actually gets to come in and play. Uh, so that uh, it is, uh, uh, you also put time into creativity. Then we say, okay, now, if uh, it gets between, let's say, one player and 100,000 players, then we can do a revenue share that is uh, uh, 2080 in my favor. Uh, you do 100,000 guys and uh, 200,000 guys, then the revenue share keeps shifting in, in, your favor, in your favor. So basically, the more popular your content is, the more you actually end up funding from us because then I'm also very sure that if I do a tournament on it tomorrow, you, your game is actually the one I'll choose. So that works for you in the sense that uh, if I'm to choose a tournament to run again, 
uh, this one now brings us numbers typically, then why don't we go with this? So basically it's also to, to create competition amongst the game developers to give me something that when I say I put this, I, I am always guaranteed three million guys. Yeah, that sort of approach. And what's the role of storytelling when it comes to game development? Um, how important is storytelling? Ultimately, uh, a game is a story. Uh, what is news content? News content is some, somebody who has sent everybody else to go and listen to Moshene as much as they can listen to all around the country. Then they come and package it nicely, then they wear a suit and tell you the story. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So in a game, and uh, I would take an example like uh, the story of Capedo, uh, the, the wrestling, and you know that, that that's something that is plaguing us as a country. What are the truths behind that story? What are the challenges behind that story? How can you resolve that story? What do you want anybody to learn about that story? Because that's what typically news does for you: informs you, entertains you, and you know uh, uh, that sort of thing. So for me, I begin from that level where. I think this is something worth the world knowing. Because it, if it's a story that is exciting enough, then it actually translates into people curiously wanting to come in to understand what it's about. Yeah. Th the story of football, everybody likes talking about football, and that's why FIFA actually has that much traction uh, uh, around itself. Yeah, and so for me, uh, 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 and, and for anybody, because the, the way to level and the way to ask him to actually come and develop a game with me is he might not be a developer, but he has this most interesting scenario of life uh, that can be translated into challenges, rewards, and all these sort of things. And that's where, for me, I would rather begin from. Yeah. So for me, I see that as a role of games, game, storytelling in games. Yeah. Please let's give our guest speaker a big hand of applause. You have educated us. You have informed us. You have challenged us. You have stimulated our thinking. I think very important. We need more of this, isn't it? Um, but do something about what you've had. What can you do? Create a game. What else can you do? Play more games. Play more games. <laughs> Hopefully you'll win five billion. Just be curious, isn't it? Because you don't know when, whether, whatever you're thinking, you, you, you might be actually underestimating what you have in your head right now. Maybe something has come up as you were speaking. And, 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 and maybe you're not sure. Yeah? But let's have a chat about it. Yeah? Let's talk to him about it and his team and see the viability, isn't it? Because some, you know, like what uh, 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 the question was being asked here by... Uh, Jean-Luc here about, you know, sometimes you have spent time, it doesn't work. That's the reality. It's a risk you'll take. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything about it. Yeah? So maybe you have an idea right now, but it doesn't materialize. It's okay. That's how life is. You know, people start businesses, they don't work. Yeah? But just be on the course, isn't it? Do something. Just take an action uh, and let's try. Yeah? Because we don't know which one will take off. Even when it talks about the, 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 in the Bible about a farmer sowing seeds, some will germinate, some will not. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't sow the seed, isn't it? So at least do something. If not, be curious and get deeper into the subject. I'm sure there's a lot of information available on, on, on this subject, and let's see where it will take us, isn't it? But above all, eh, let's trust God, isn't it? As believers, let's also trust God to lead us in the paths of righteousness around this issue. The path of a righteous man is ordered of the Lord. God could give you an idea and you can convert it and it can be one of those success stories. So don't underestimate what your thoughts are, are in the next few days. That's what I'm saying. Yeah? Don't. At least sometimes even meeting up with other people to build the idea might get you there. Don't be on your own around it. Because I've seen a lot of these artistic creative areas require people to come together and put their heads together. That's what I've seen. I, I see it even in the workplace. It's no longer a one-man show kind of work. We come together, co-create something. You know, one person could build your idea from level 30 to 60. Another one will take it to 100. 
So don't sit on your own on that idea. Let's get together. If you have a thought, get a group of people together and think it through and build it further. Cindy? So I want to just thank you all for uh, being here with us. We have come to the end. Eh, is that a question? Oh, yes, good question. Let him tell us. If you? Okay, uh, first, I, I think for today, what I'll do is I'll leave him uh, all details that uh, you require. Uh, but then my challenge for naming my uh, candy crush, I, I still want that. <laughs> so, Rev will have all the details. So, when you attack a lunch, Serena, please. Uh, Ju Tuma Gina to Reverend Arnold Orono there be behind. Uh, let's let's see who can get that uh, lunch. Okay, so I, I want us to pray for ourselves and just commit ourselves to God. Each and every one of us have our own challenges or dreams that we want to achieve. But ultimately, it's about who, what, how God can lead you to that place, yeah? So the spiritual angle is also very important. We can do things in our own wisdom and intelligence. But at the end of the day, yeah, only one power can take it to the next level. Sometimes we need a supernatural force, isn't it? So let's draw on that right now as we just close in prayer. And just dedicate yourself to God and, you know, ask him to lead you in the paths of righteousness. Ask him to order your steps. In the area of your career, if there's something you're believing God for, Maybe you're not sure where your career should go. You're not sure which business you should start. You're just n maybe just struggling. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He can lead you in the path that you need to be. And, and that's why we, you know, trust in him. So, Father, this morning we just thank you for this session that we've had. And uh, we want to thank you for the opportunities that we have as a generation that... Uh, are very unique, even compared to previous generations. I want to thank you, Father, because you are the God that uh, has created us and uh, you're the one who will lead us in, into what you have for us. Your word says that even before we were conceived, you knew us by name. You knew, our, you, you knew the path of our lives, O oh God. And for any of us here who are trusting you to lead them, in the path that they should go around their lives, their careers, their families, their jobs, their businesses. We're asking you for grace upon their lives, oh God, in this, in this moment. You know their needs even before they have verbalized them. And so we are trusting you for each and every individual. That, Lord, if there are any struggles in their lives, that, Lord, you will be the way, the truth, and the life for them, that you will empower them, oh God, supernaturally, even to navigate the seasons that we are in. For many of the young people, oh God, who are looking ahead and sometimes losing heart, disillusioned about uh, the economic challenges we are facing in the nation and in, in, at the globe. Lord, you know, we know that you're our provider. We know that uh, there's nothing impossible for you. So we trust you for each and every one of these young people under the sound of my voice this morning. We trust you for their lives. We trust you that you lead them in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Be their shepherd in this season, even as they contemplate various aspects of their lives, what to study, uh, what, to, what jobs to do, what to do. Lord, help them, O oh God. Thank you for that supernatural grace that comes alongside them. We thank you, Father, for our speaker, and we thank you for their company. Lord, we want to thank you, O oh God, for the idea you've given them and the opportunity that they are giving others to be empowered. Father, won't you bless them, Lord? Won't you increase them in everything that they need? supernaturally, oh God. We thank you for contacts, we thank you for funding, we thank you for ideas, we thank you for resources, we thank you for everything that they are trusting you for. The Lord, you will open a way. And Lord, even as they empower others, may they also be empowered more and more to help more young people in this continent, oh God, to, to reach their fullness of their potential. So we thank you, Father, for scaling them up, taking them to a global scale, oh God, uh, to the global scene and helping them, oh God, even to um, 
uh, scale up their work in, in esports and in everything else that they are planning to do. Thank you for Tony and for his family, Lord. Watch over them, bless them, O oh God. Thank you for divine protection over them. Thank you, Father, for divine enablement for everything that they are doing. And we just thank you, Father, even for the rest of the directorship in that company, that, Lord, you continue to uh, lead them in the way they should go. Thank you, Father, even for the youths in this nation. Lord, we are trusting you for divine ideas on how to scale up the issues of non-employment, O oh God. Lord, uh, we pray for the church, that, Lord, in the church will, f will find solutions, will... Uh, uh, will wait on you for divine solutions on how to support the young people in this nation, oh God, in the challenges that they are facing. So Lord, we thank you even for uh, what we have already heard. May we be faithful stewards and diligent stewards of what we've heard. May that curiosity continue to build in us as we continue to ex ex uh, research the different technologies in the world and how uh, we as young people can uh, leverage them, O oh God, even for the, 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 the thing that you've created us to do. We bless the refreshments before us as we partake of them, bless them and sanctify them. Thank you for the rest of our day and the weekend. Uh, watch over us and be with us in everything that we do. And we'll not forget to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.